feel the power flow through me. Now where might this woman be, hmm? Is she a witch? Grandar's not going to marry a witch. Bad attitudes, you see. Perhaps she cast a love, love spell on Brenda. Maybe she will not uh, look as she actually does appear. Brenda would hate to marry a pig or, or some such. Hmm. Interesting. We have uh, a bit of produce hanging up. It's a bit nicer than uh, I would imagine for a witch to live in, yes? Empty wine, don't need any of this. A bit of salmon couldn't hurt. Where to go here? They drink all Down to the undercraft? I swear, they're making me do this for a laugh. At least I'm not dealing with the prisoners down there. Yeah. They're making me do this for a laugh. I don't know how I feel about what goes on down there. I bet Naris gets a kick out of it. Nasty fella he is. You'd better quiet down before you end up there. Then I'd have to work the forge. Hmm. Cherub's Heart. Volume 18. Oh, no, thank you. We've got some bars smithed over here. Hello there. Well, might I just borrow this? Wonderful. In the round. Sneaky sneak. Are you going to be uh, upset with me? What was that? Yes, indeed. Brandar's not welcome here. Hmm. Well, I should take care of business, I do suppose, but... I also would like to see what they were talking about under. Under, hmm? Let's just have a little look. Narus was a name that they mentioned. Ah... I don't think Isolda mentioned the name, the person that I was betrothed to. Another door. Nobody home. But many bottles of wine littering the floor. Phew. Randar doesn't want to marry a drunkard. They've given all of that up, you see. Mostly. <laughs> Sometimes. Depending on the day that you ask me. Seems quite a lovely place to hold a wedding. So many guests wandering about as well. But I don't think they will be pleased to see Brandar. Just keep the bow ready. Send some invites, you know? That is quite kind of me, yes. Hello there. Oh, there's another. Should pull like two mages at once. Although I do have the potions Someone to resist there. magic. No one is here. Travel lightly. <laughs> Down they go. We will say this about the mages. If you get the jump on them, no problem at all. But if they find you first, well, prepare for some trouble. Hmm. Brandar knows how to deal with mages. Not my first pony show. You know that? Is my lovely bride up here? Hi. What was that? Oh, nothing. Nothing, nothing. Please, please, please. Not been found yet. Oh my. It's a necromancer and an ice wizard, it seems. And a thrall of the necromancers as well. Ah. I'm curious about this portal. 
You heard nothing. Never again will you hear. <laughs> Silence and darkness forever. For you, not for Grandar. Grandar, uh, not so good with the silence, you know. Body. The body. Terrible. This isn't it. This wizard is quite resilient. Must be a leader of some sort. Perhaps it is the uh, the spells she's casting. Mercy. Mercy, she says. Oh, I don't know that word. I knew You're my goodness. With a bit of ice she's firing my way. Luckily, I've got just what I need. Resist frost. How many of these do I take? All of them? I don't think it's uh, going to help me much. One at a time! How do you like fire? Oh my. Come around the corner, wizard. Let me show you how Brandar plays. Ah. 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 She's a powerful one, I'll give her that. She must have been training her mind for quite some time down here. No more! I yield! I No more! Yes, you yield. But does Brandar? Little troublemaker. Give me my arrow back. You may not have this. I paid good money. Hmm. Guardian Circle. It makes sense that a uh, necromancer would have this. Yes. Just in case the undead decide to turn on him, huh? Hmm. The chest. Oh, what sort of goodies are you keeping here, huh? <laughs> ah, some gems. Scroll of Blizzard. Interesting. Chain lightning spell. Oh, Brandar might quite enjoy this. Stone flesh might be better than oak flesh. Yes. Quite a good amount of things they have here, huh? Let's see about these spell books. Chain lightning. I would like to learn. Conjure familiar? Hmm, not for me. Enhance speed, enhance weapon speed, fast heal. Oh, this would be quite good. Gate opening one. What does it say here? Increase speed, weapon speed, one hand, sneak, block for 10 seconds. The caster takes 3 damage per second. I don't see myself using this. Rendar does not like to hurt himself. Lesser ward. Oh! This could be quite good. And apparently I already know that one. Huh. Unlearn any spell equipped in right or left hand. Fascinating. Many of these uh, stone fleshes. I picked up so many of these books. Slow time. Oh, that could be good as well. Yes. Many more magics I know now. Let's see. If we could get rid of the uh, oak flesh and exchange it, I think that would be uh, agreeable, yes? Stone flesh. I want to try this time stutter as well. Run faster, swing weapon multiple times faster. Ah, oh, but so costly it is. Oof. Rid of the healing for the fast healing. Yes. Very good. Chain lightning, of course. Hmm. Nine points per second. Wow, this is quite nice. I think I should use the chain lightning. I should be using firebolt as well instead of the flames. 
Flames is, uh... Not as strong as I had suspected it to be. Hmm. Kin's Peace. The voice suits wild beasts. Well... Brandar does not quite like the, uh, the voice, you see. Tripwire. Yes, we should be using these. Ah. So many new... No abilities. Look at this. Chain lightning. Oh. Feel the power flow through me. But uh, again, it is quite costly. Regardless, let us uh, explore this portal just a bit. Hmm. Ah. So lovely. What a wonderful place this is. It's almost as if uh, I am in a dream. Could it be? Someone playing the lute? This is a song I know. Ah, oh, the revelers all here. Hello, Sam. How are you, my friend? You have that staff here. for me? I was beginning to think you might not make it. Hmm. It was quite a trip and it took me uh, a bit of time to decide whether or not to come after you in order to get my payment. But in the end, hmm, I am here. What is this place? I thought you might not remember your first trip here. You had a big night. I think you've definitely earned the staff. A big night, huh? Well, uh, let me see that staff. What sort of condition is it oh, in? Oh, the Hagraven feather and so on. You can throw all those out. You see, I really just needed something to encourage Whoa. you to go out into the world and spread merriment. My goodness. You are, you are Daedra? Sanguine. I've read about you before. Sam Gwyn? Yes. It should have been obvious the whole time. Oh, you trickster, you. Well, it is nice of you to unveil your true form. Uh, am I the one that is supposed to be marrying you, or how's this going to work? Who is the mommy? Who is the daddy, huh? <laughs> I don't owe you money, do I? Not at the moment. I got the staff, so uh, all of this was just a prank, yes? Just a prank? Just a prank? The Daedric Lord of Debauchery does not deal in mere pranks. This may have begun as a minor amusement, but it wasn't long before I realized you'd make a more interesting bearer of my not-quite-holy staff. <laughs> not-quite-holy, yes. Well, I think Meridia might have something to say about that. So now I've got the Dawnbreaker in one hand and this unholy staff in the other. <laughs> the duplicity, you see. Can you tell me why did you choose me to bear this staff? Let's be honest here. I don't always think my decisions through. But you, <laughs> you're going places. Maybe a little influence from your old Uncle Sanguine could help adjust your course a bit. Oh, well, I am going places. I've been to quite a few lands so far. Elsewhere, Morrowind, Cyrodiil, now Skyrim. Perhaps Hammerfell next. Hmm, one can only wonder. Well, regardless, I do thank you for uh, coming through on your word. The Daedric Prince of Debauchery might be a troublemaker, but uh, he's not a liar. That's reassuring. My pleasure. But I think it's time for you to go. No fun keeping you locked up in here with the staff. Well, farewell then. What an, a long, strange trip it's been, huh? And here we are, back where it all started. Huh. What do you need? Hello there. Trinkets, odds and ends. That sort of thing. Perhaps I could uh, sell you just a little bit of something. Not the staff, of course. 
We got this wonderful staff. And, uh... I probably shouldn't talk too much about it. But, it's a nice thing. Yes. Hunting bow of Torpor. Hmm. Yes, you may have these things. I'm not in so much need. Where did all of this come from? I'm so unsure. Well, at least you are relatively moneyed, huh? Staff of Firebolt, Staff of Familiar. Yes, not quite holy it is. Well, it should be a good bit of fun. Rendar's becoming quite adept at the fire magic, you see. Hmm. Oh, I'm backwards. There's Sam. He's playing tricks on my mind. This is not good. Ah, I apologize for buying all those things. Uh, my my head is screwed on just a bit backwards at the moment. Could I tempt you to take these things back? I'm so sorry. Oh, you don't want to give a full refund. Well, I suppose that's fine. This is the staff. Sanguine Rose summons a Gramora. Fascinating. I also have this staff of the familiar, which, uh, I suppose the Sanguine Rose would be a bit more useful to me. What's more useful, a familiar or a Dromora? Hmm. Pretty easy question, that. Ah, here are some robes for you. You like these? Here we are. Circlet of Destruction. Bracers of Wielding. Yes, I think you shall find this quite pleasing. Hmm, and I've got many potions. Let us see what I can upload for you. Hmm, Minor Stamina. Yes, I don't need so many of these. Minor Magicka. I only find myself using the healing potions, you want me to be completely honest. But, uh, here, maybe you take some of these Frost Resist. They did come in quite useful, but I think I am done with this for now. Hmm, and I still have the school in my bag as well. <laughs> yes, I must keep this. I suppose that is all, Miss Sarah. Thank you so much. Farewell. And to you. Hmm, is there an alchemy table somewhere that I might use? Suppose not. It's a simple town, you see. Ah, back into the world with our less than holy staff. Quite startling to meet a Daedric Prince face to face. You understand? I I don't know why he would take on this human form and lure Brandar into such misadventure. Brandar could have found that misadventure all by his lonesome, don't you worry. <laughs> ah, but now here we are, back at the Dragon Bridge. I think I also promised the uh, Solitude Wizards that I would take care of the Wolf Skull Cave. Where might that be? Ah, I remember this place. Yes. Maybe before we go into more adventure, I should just, uh, sit and have a little read, hmm? That sounds nice to me. I've got so many books that I have yet to read. Let us read about the cake and the diamond, shall we? By Alfin Muendil. Muendil, of course. So prolific he is. <laughs> I was in the Rat and Pot, a foreigner corner club in Aldrun, talking to my fellow rats when I s first saw the woman. Now, Breton women are fairly common in the Rat and Pot. As a breed, they seem inclined to wander far from their perches in High Rock. Old Breton women, however, are not so migratory, and the wise and old Biddy drew attention to herself, wandering around the room, talking to everyone. Nimloff and Odiad were at their usual places, drinking their usual stuff. Odiad was showing off a prize he had picked up in some illicit manner, a colossal diamond, as large as a baby's hand, 
and clear as spring water. I was admiring it when I heard the creaking of old bones behind me. Good day to you, my friends, said the old woman. My name is Abel Chiridet, and I'm in need of financial assistance to facilitate my transportation to Ald Redania. We want to see the temple for charity, said Nimloff curtly. I'm not looking for charity, said Abel. I'm looking to barter services. Don't make me sick, old woman, laughed Odiad. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Did you say your name was Abel Chirdiet, I asked? Are you related to Abel Chirdiet, the High Rock Alchemist? Closely related, she said with a cackle. We are the same person. Perhaps I could prepare you a potion in exchange for gold. I notice you, ha you have in your possession a, a very fine diamond. The magical qualities of diamonds are almost boundless. Sorry, old woman. I ain't giving it up for magic. It was trouble enough stealing this one, said Odiad. I've got a fence who'll trade it for gold. But your fence will demand a certain percentage, will he not? What if I could give you a potion of invisibility in exchange? In return for that diamond, you could have a means to steal many more. A very fair exchange of services, I would say. It would be, but I have no gold to give you, said Odiad. I'll take what remains of the diamond after I've made my potion, said Abel. If you took it to the Mage's Guild, you'd have to supply all the other ingredients and pay for it as well, but I learned my craft in the wild, where no potion makers existed to dissolve diamonds into dust. And you must do it all by hand, by simple skill. You're blessed with the remnants of those fool potion makers at the Guild sw simply swallow up. That all sounds very nice, said Nimla. But how do you... we know your potion's gonna work. If you make one potion, take the rest of Odiad's diamond and leave. We won't know until you've gone whether the potion works or not. Ah, trust is so rare these days, sighed Abel. I suppose I could make two potions for you, and there'd still be a little bit of the diamond left for me. Not a lot, but perhaps enough to get me to Aldredania. Then you could try the first potion right here and now, and see if you're satisfied or not. But, I interjected. You could make one potion that works and one that doesn't, and take more of the diamond. She could even give you a slow-acting poison that by the time you got to Aldredania, you'd be dead. Bleeding Kinnereth, you Dunmar are suspicious. I will hardly have any diamond left, but I could make two potions of two doses each so you can satisfy yourself that the potion works and has no negative effects. If you still don't trust me, come along with me to my table and witness my craft if you'd like. So it was decided that I would accompany Abel back to her table, where she had all of her traveling bags full of herbs and minerals to make certain that she was not making two different potions. It took nearly an hour of preparation, but she kindly allowed me to finish her half-filled flagon of wine while I watched her work. Splintering the diamond and powdering the pieces required the bulk of the time. Over and over again she waved her gnarled hands over the gem, intoning ancient enchantments breaking the facets of the stone into smaller and smaller pieces. Separately, she made pastes of minced bitter green, crushed red bulbs, and alarcospay, and three blips of Siciliani Cici oil. I finished the wine. Old woman, I finally said with a sigh. How much longer is this going to take? I'm getting tired of watching you work. The Mage's Guild has fooled the populace into thinking alchemy is a science, she said. But if you're tired, rest your eyes. My eyes closed, seemingly of their own volition, but there had been something in the wine, something that made me do what she asked. I think I'll make up the potion as cakes. It's much more potent that way. Now tell me, young man, what will your friends do once I give them the potion? Mug you in the street afterwards to retrieve the rest of the diamond, I said simply. I didn't want to tell her the truth, but there it was. I thought so, but I wanted to be certain. You may open your eyes now. I opened my eyes. Abel had made a small presentation on a wooden platter, two small cakes and a silver cutting knife. Pick up the cakes and bring them to the table, said Abel, and don't say anything except to agree with whatever, the, whatever I say. I, I did that as I was told. It was a curious sensation. I didn't really mind being her puppet. 
Of course, in retrospect I resent it, but it seemed perfectly natural at the time to obey without question. Obel handed the cakes to Odiad and I dutifully verified that both cakes were made the same way. She suggested that he cut one of the cakes in half, and she would take one piece and he'd take the other. Just so he would know that they worked, and they were not poisoned. Odiad thought that was a good idea, and he used Abel's knife to cut the cake. Abel took the piece on the left and popped it into her mouth. Odiad took the piece on the right and swallowed it a bit more cautiously. Abel and all the bags she was carrying vanished from sight almost instantly. Nothing happened to Odiad. Why'd it work for the witch and not for me? cried Odiad. Because the diamond dust was only on the left side of the blade, said the old alchemist through me. I felt her control lessened as the distance grew and she hurried invisibly down the street. Invisibly down the dark Aldrin street away from the rat and pot. We never found a belt here that, or the diamonds. Whether she completed her pilgrimage to Aldredania is anyone's guess. The cakes had no effect except to give Odiad a bad case of the droops that lasted for nearly a week. And so a lesson was learned, was it not? Tricky old women. Hmm. The Bretons not quite elves, but uh, I wouldn't suggest just trusting them either, you see. Not good, not good at all. Hmm. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.